Hey guys, and welcome back to the Hobby Dude 007 channel. Going through the computer this morning, and I ran across a file that I had totally forgotten about. A few days before my surgery back in March, uh, a number of the guys from the Salvino JR Models Builders Group got together with Jim Rogers at the Petty Museum in Petty's Garage, and we had a very special tour guide. Um, that was really really cool and uh, didn't do a video on it with everything that was going on after the surgery and uh, so it's late but I want to share it with you so stick around the morning of our get-together I arrived at the Petty Museum I think it was about 8 20 in the morning and the only car that I recall being in the parking lot was a black pickup with a Texas license plate. So I knew Jim had beat me there. So uh, we had a few minutes to visit and fellowship and, uh, and and just have a good time and talk. And then Bonnie came up, uh, who runs the uh, museum up front and uh, greets the guests and all that. And when Bonnie got there, she greeted us, said, I'll have the doors open just a second. She went in. Uh, a few minutes later, she let us in, and, and uh, Jim and I went in, and, and as soon as you go in the museum, you see the uh, um, gift shop there, and we took a few minutes and uh, looked at the models of uh, Rick's that he had built for uh, Richard and Dale that are on display there in the museum, right over the section where they sell the model cars. And I thought it interesting. They sell the, the models for $43. Duh. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, here's a shot of Jim uh, standing by the display there. And uh, we were we were just kind of fellowshipping as some of the other guys started to arrive. And we were waiting for our, uh, our tour guide, who was Dale Inman himself. And uh, Dale got there. Let me tell you, uh, what an awesome, awesome guy! If you don't know who Dale Inman is, and if you're if you follow stock car racing or stock car history, I don't know how you couldn't. Dale uh, is Richard Petty's cousin and best friend. These two these two guys are inseparable. Um, Dale has one distinct uh, record that that Richard doesn't have. While Richard has seven championships, uh, and Dale was with him through those. Dale has eight championships because he was the crew chief uh, for Terry Labonte when he won his first championship. So um, Dale Dale knows racing and, and stock car racing, and, and uh, it was just such an honor and a privilege to uh, to have him give us the, the tour. I've met Dale before, but this is the first time that, that we got to spend this much time with him. And he took uh, a lot of time and was just so gracious with us going through the museum and and uh, while you look at the placards and and things that describe a lot of what you're seeing, uh, to have someone with the first-hand knowledge going back to the beginning uh, with Lee Petty all the way up uh, was just such a, a real treat. And uh, there was a lot that I learned that I did not know. Um, and I pride myself on, on my my being a Petty fan and, and knowing a bit of the history and reading up on stuff, but to hear it firsthand, what a treat. Uh, Dale took a few minutes, and we talked about the 67 Plymouth, which is, uh, again, one of my favorites. And you all know my all-time favorite is the 70 Flat Nose and the, and the 71, but the 67 holds a place in my heart because of the, just the uniqueness of it. It's mean, low-slung, as you see here, and... Um, it holds the record for the most wins in a row, 10 wins in a row in 1967. And um, as Dale will tell you here in just a few minutes, this car probably, I think it won about 50 or so races, but it won uh, 27 in 1967 out of 48 races. Just, just a dominant or the dominant car, I think. And then that 10 in a row. Uh, there's a look at the Hemi that's in it. But uh, listen to Dale talk a little bit about this thing. Richard, you know, you know, the seat bracket is hooked to the roll bar over there. But back in the day, they, they would bar it run across here. Of course, we didn't put it in, and then the seat belt was hooked there. So if that bar gives you, it's trapped. And it's got holes here where you can 
look and see the tire. We got them taped over. Sometimes you have to do things for yourself. And there's one up here where he could see the right front. And of course, you've never seen a car where the roll bars were tilted like that. We thought would make them stronger. You're making lots of notes, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Jim if he's making lots no, of notes. No. <laughs> but this this car was built in '66, and I think it won 13 or 14 races. It would build a brand new car just like it, same body. I think the grill was a little bit different, and. Uh, couldn't do no good with him, 67, so we dug this one out, and it won 27 out of 48 races. So wow. this car's won probably pretty close to 50 races in two years. Hmm. And I think Tiny drove it in Daytona in 67, I think he ran fourth. But there's so many records we didn't keep back then, you know, just that we should have, but we didn't know it was going to get to this. And people would call me all the time wanting me to verify a petty car, and I, ain't, I can't do it because we ain't got records on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can recognize them. And there wasn't that many cars. But and Rick has said that so many times, because we, we try to find what colors yeah. the things are for the, the model builders and stuff. And so many times, checking with the, either the drivers or, or other people and saying, you know, what, what was, do you remember? What was the interior color? I don't know. Yeah. It's like, this is a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we think they're really special, but to the driver, it's a, it's, it's a tool. And they may not have paid that much att attention to, to some of the details, but uh, some did, some didn't. But, you know, it, it goes back to... Okay, this one was built in 66, but you know, his big wreck at Darlington in 70 brought on the window net, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many safety features that went along back then that they carried over to the extreme now, maybe, you know. <laughs> From the 67, we went over to the Superbird, and I apologize for not letting you hear everything that Dale had to say, but I wasn't standing as close to him as I was in the video on the 67, so you you really just couldn't make out a lot of what he was saying. I could hear him, but it didn't, it didn't carry over recording-wise. But good news, I am going to be doing a video specifically and only about the Superbird uh, that'll be coming up here yeah, in the next month or so, I hope. Um, got some other information I want to gather on that real quick. But, so I don't want to dwell too much on Superbird right now. But uh, some interesting stuff. You see the aerodynamics, just how slick the paint is on this thing. And notice how the, uh, the humps over the tires there, the air vents uh, that allowed the air to escape, um, are glassed in aerodynamically. Of course, this thing just looked fast sitting still anyway. But... Um, different story moving on when we got over to the uh other building and there's multiple buildings uh at the compound and when we got over there it just continued dale uh as we were going across uh greeted some folks that were doing a birthday party in the parking lot uh and told us a little bit about the the different buildings and and when they were first constructed the building you're looking at right here was uh built for the fords when uh, they first started doing those for 69. And uh, as we went through, you see all the cars there, and as we went through, we looked at all kinds of collectibles, things like that, and um, that that anything, games, toys, um, slot car tracks, things like that, anything that had a 43 on it that was petty related, they have in a, in a display. And uh, then when we started getting back into the cars, you see here the 19... Uh, uh, 65 Barracuda, the drag racer, and this was just a great piece of history here too. Uh, loved the blue windows, the blue headlight, just just everything in here is just awesome. Uh, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you, you, you can go back and, and look at a little more in depth on those. Uh, and of course, here's that classic uh, Hemi uh, that Maurice was a master with, and uh, one of them on display. And there's just, there's a lot of different engines and stuff you can see there. Now here you see Dale um, in a section where there's a lot of die casts, 
uh, things that have been given to Richard. Uh, there's a tribute area for Dale Earnhardt. There's a tribute area for the Wood Brothers. Uh, they have a lot of love and respect for one another, obviously. Uh, and there's a lot of models, model kits that have been given to the museum uh, that are on display as well. And when we got back to Petty's garage, uh, this young man, and I've got his name written down somewhere, and for the life of me, I can't find it. He is actually one of the employees uh, back in Petty's garage where they do the hot rods and stuff. Uh, and is also, I think he's a member of the Builders Club. But uh, he was back there, and Jim Jim uh, greeted him uh, with a big smile, and, and uh, so I, I got a picture of them for Jim, and I thought I'd throw that in there, and I'll hopefully I'll be able to tag that name in there here shortly. Um, and then as we were leaving the garage, the hot rod shop, we walked out, and um, some of the cars that were uh, sitting outside that... Um, I guess are waiting to be picked up, things like that. And you know, I, I love 70 Roadrunners. And this sublime green Roadrunner with the white interior, which beautiful, beautiful, uh, was sitting outside. But I'm going to be honest, guys, I did not like this car. Um, and you're going to see why in just a second. In fact, when Dale was uh, telling us about it, I got the hint that I'm, I'm not sure he liked it either, but eh, maybe I'm, I'm reading more into it. But someone had taken a Superbird and ordered it uh, or, or brought it in to have it modified into a convertible. And, you know, Superbird is, is a standalone classic. Um I just didn't like this, but that's a personal taste. But um, uh, just, I don't know. But I'll give it to him. It is unique. Some of the other cars sitting there, and there's one of the Petty, Must Petty Edition uh, Mustangs. And uh, cool stuff. Went around to the back of the, uh, the main buildings um, where the uh, gym for the workout for the crew and all that stuff was back in the very back is where they keep a lot of the old stuff where the junkyard uh, used to be and you see the ghost car there of the number 40 the wing is off of it but uh, pete hamilton's ghost car that in one of my other videos you saw that up front um in the little picnic area when you first pull in the parking lot and right behind that you see something that's kind of rare you see a dodge l1000 uh, cab over with a sleeper and uh, there was a, a company in Australia that made those that that conversion kit at one time and I've been for the life of me trying to find one and I can't find one I have something in mind for that that I want to build so hopefully I'll find one leaving uh, that area we went back up to the main body shop and as soon as we walked in the door um, Dale was telling us about the body shop and uh, the paints and all that kind of stuff. And when we first walked in, look at this. Is that not beautiful? Great looking Camaro. Uh, as I recall, there was about four paint booths right here. And I think there was two in the other building. Uh, you see the paint booths back in the back there. And then there's one where the door is closed and the light's off to the right. Uh, this truck... Uh, I love the petty blue accents around it. Uh, some of them were, were more subtle than others, but it, it was really cool. And then over to the far right, you see a uh, body for, I don't know if the wing was just off uh, a 70 uh, flat nose or it, it could have been a Superbird. I don't know. Um, but the uh, parts uh, ready for some paint. And uh, we stood there in the body shop for quite a while and, and heard a lot of stories. And, and uh, uh, I tell you what, a lot of people were breathing and, and hacking up petty blue paint, apparently, <laughs> for all the, the uh, paint that was shot in there. Um, from here, we went back over to the, uh, the main building and we sat down and listened to some stories and just talked around the table and... Uh, Jim broke out one of the uh, 20th scale 64 Lotus um, and sh was showing that to us. And uh, this was the, the 3D print that he had made. And uh, 
just something awesome. At the end of the video, I got a little something special I'll show you too. And then there's a look at the engine on it. And um, several guys shared some models with Dale with it with it, with us, and I'm going to do that in another video too. Um, and here we are, just kind of sitting around and just uh, doing some talking. But overall, what an awesome, awesome visit. And I, I sincerely hope that coming up. Um, maybe in the near future that we'll be able to do this again and get more guys the whole crew uh, because it was a lot of fun there was a lot of laughter uh some great stories some of which i'm not gonna share right now because there's gonna be a time for it let's put it that way <laughs> but uh I, i'm hoping we can do this again and maybe get the whole uh, salvino gang as well as many many more of you guys to come and join us um it it was just an absolute blast now in closing i want to share with you some stuff i got from jim uh you know what let me reset the camera and we'll do that if you're familiar with salvino's jr models whether you're a member of the builders club or just uh, someone who watched it on saturday morning you may be familiar with jim's box of crap <laughs> authentic certified by salvino's jr models Jim, uh, the designer for most of the uh, the newer cars, also does 3D printings and upgraded parts for these NASCARs. Um, and um, after we got back, um, I think it was a day or so after my surgery, uh, I got this and I wasn't really feeling it. It was a few days before I got into it, but I want to share with you uh, like we did with uh, Matthew stuff, the quality of the of the 3D printing as well as what's available out there. Well, this particular box, uh, Jim sent me. Now check this stuff out. This again is really good stuff. I tell you what, this 3D printing and, and again, can you imagine in, in just a few years what it's going to be like? Uh, if it's like this now, let's start with these springs. Hopefully you can see those. You just uh, see the way they're printed, but that's easily trimmed out the centers. Um, very nice and awesome. You know, the uh, kit rear ends, the, the nine inch rear ends, have that big hole in the top and you got a separate piece here at the pumpkin. And as you see, all one piece very very clean and check out the uh, well, if I can hopefully let that focus there the uh, calipers really really nice very smooth um, front suspension and you also have the uh, now I hope you can see this um, if I can get the light right, you see the studs and the brake calipers much more accurate, much better looking. Um, and again, you can see the the wheel studs there. A replacement set of uh, lower A arms, and again, you see the uh, the detail on the calipers. These things are really really nice so you want to dress them up just a little bit uh, and by the way how you order these things is um, just uh, email Jim at Salvino not Salvino's but at Salvino dot us and simply ask for a uh, list of what products he has and next up you know how some of the Monte Carlos, especially the, the GMs, have that uh, the cross under headers that connect under the engine. If you want to replace those, there you go. So you can replace those, and of course those little things you can easily remove. And to that end, you also have separate pipes. And these are hollow, as you can see there, so that's easy to paint. But you've got your uh, separate pipes there. 
Jim, thank you very much for those, my friend. These will be getting used here very shortly. And I think this is new because I did not see this in my last pricing list, but um, oop. a safety net. Look at the even the hardware down here. And uh, you see how it's shaped. So if you want to have it hanging out the window, or if you, I'm sure if you wanted to reverse it and have it hanging like I like to do mine, hanging um, inside uh, by the roll bar, you could do that as well. But um, very clean. In fact, and we'll just take that off of that thing there. Check that out. You can see that hardware a little better now. But how it just hangs right over and looks really. I mean, look at the, even the weaving, and I'm not sure, guys, if I'm doing it justice here or not. Very smooth, excellent, excellent stuff. And uh, again, Jim, thank you, buddy. Appreciate you very much. Love you, man. Um, but again, Jim at Salvino.us. And uh, there's so many other parts that he carries besides those. Now, this next part, you cannot order. Uh, and it is not a box of crap. This is just something he sent me. You guys know from uh, a number of videos, I love building engines. And um, this engine is not available, won't be available for some time. But i got to share this with you. It's a 120th scale Ford uh, it's what's going in the Lotus. If you remember earlier, we looked at that um, 64, I think 1964 Lotus, I think it was. Um, well, that's what this engine is for. And this is just the engine, not the whole uh, car. But I am in love with this thing already. I mean, look at this. And by the way, this engine that's that's in that car that you see here, this is also the same Ford engine that was in the uh, GT40s back in uh, the 60s. But I want you to look at the engraving in this stuff. I am eager to get this thing. <laughs> and the hollow pipes again. Is this thing just not cool? Your transaxle. Yeah, and I, you can barely see it. Well, no, you can. You can see the screens on the uh, on the stacks, on the velocity stacks down there. Is this thing not just wicked? And like I said, guys, don't ask Jim about this because this is uh, this is kind of a sneak peek. And uh, I, I am I am deeply touched that I, I was uh, given an opportunity to get a close look at it and uh, get a build on it. But wow, just awesome, just awesome. Um, well, guys, that is it. And again, as far as the petty visit goes, I sincerely hope we do that again. And hopefully maybe with the whole gang. Um, just an absolutely fantastic time. And uh, look forward to, to having some, some more guys. And, and it'd be gr so great to meet so many more of you. And uh, we'll have some fun. Well, guys, for this time, that's it. Remember, head over to Hobby Nut Models. Visit uh, Mark's website. Check out uh, the inventory. Pick you up a model, some paint, tools, whatever supplies you may need. Uh, check him out. Guys, God bless. I love you, man. Talk to you in the next video. Later, guys.